This is a lesson on geometric series. Previously, we have covered geometric sequences. Now we take a look at the geometric series, which are very closely related to the sequence. So to begin, we consider the following geometric sequence. 2, 8, 32, 128. Pretty standard looking geometric sequence. We have a, a value of 2, common ratio of 4. Now if you took that geometric sequence and you replace the commas with plus signs, you'd get this. 2 plus 8 plus 32 plus 128 plus so on. What you've got, got now is create. you have a geometric series. It's really all that a geometric series is. You replace the commas of the sequence with a plus sign and then you are dealing with a series. So the numbers and the pattern are identical. You have an A, you have an R, you have an N but we add them together. So in fact we are looking for the sum of a geometric series. And the terminology associated with the sum of a geometric series, S1 is the symbol we use, or S will be the symbol we use, is just equal to the sum of the first term, so therefore it's just equal to T1. And then S2 would be equal to T1 plus T2, the sum of the first two terms. S3 would be T1 plus T2 plus T3, the sum of the first three. And then so on, and then I'll go all the way up to Sn, which is T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus all the way up to Tn. Now, the formula for this is always provided on a formula sheet, should you need it. Sn is equal to A multiplied by r to the n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. Worth noting that r cannot be equal to 1, so you will not have 0 on the denominator. So let's do a question. Find the sum of the first five terms of 3 plus 6 plus 12, etc. Well, here's our formula. And we just carefully insert all the values. So we do note that a is equal to 3, the first term. The common ratio is equal to 2. And then n is 5, because we want the sum of the first 5. Now one like this you could probably muscle your way through just by adding them together, but I will use the formula. Substitute everything in. So s5 is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 to the 5 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. Then the bracket gets cleaned up and that becomes 2 to the 5 is 32 minus 1 is 31 so s5 is equal to 3 times 31 divided by 1 so that's just equal to 93 and that represents the sum of the first five terms now they're not all that straightforward and these ones tend to be solved with the with the calculator in mind so here we get to um, to the nearest 100th we want to get the sum of the first 20 terms for negative 2 plus 1, etc. So here's our formula. A R N minus 1 over R minus 1. Take note of what we have. A is equal to 4. Your common ratio, if you divided out the T2 by 2, 1, you'd get negative 1 half or negative 0.5. I'm going to decimalize it because it's going to go into my calculator, calculator like that. And one thing to be aware of when, with the way this is written, too, this really means 4 plus negative 2 plus 1, and then it would be plus negative 1 half, etc., like that, right? So usually it's written, instead of putting the plus negative, just to, to make it a little tidier, it would be 4 minus 2. But it sometimes throws people when they look at it. And then n is equal to 20, so that goes into the formula. These require a little bit of skill when you're entering so that you don't so that you're consistently getting the right answer with it. So I plug everything in. A is 4, R is negative 0.5 to the 20 minus 1 and then the denominator goes like that. Now there are a few cleanup things just to make things a bit easier. You might for example recognize that it is not it is not necessary to put the negative with the 0.5 to the 20 because when you go point negative 0.5 to the 20 it's a positive number. So you might as well have omitted the negative to start with, and the uh, type of thing you can do. But on the calculator, the way I like to do these is to go after that bracket first. So I would enter 0.5 to the 20, or negative 0.5 to the 20 if you wanted to, subtract 1, then enter. So I didn't actually put a bracket around the whole thing, simply because 
um, by pressing enter I get the total of it anyways and then I take that number on my calculator and I just multiply by 4 you could press enter then if you want and then I divide by negative 0.5 minus 1 and again I don't put the zero there just because why bother and a lot of the times you can just work out the denominator first that's negative 1.5 and then avoid the bracket but it doesn't matter when you press enter here the way I've got it you'll get S20 is actually equal to 2.66666 which I will round to 2.67 So you do that every time, you'll have no problem. But be aware that you've actually got one, two, um, three, four variables. So you can actually go after any of the variables in there. So for this one, it's how many terms of this series, 2 minus 4 plus 8 minus 16 plus whatever, must be added to yield a sum of 342. So in fact, we are not looking for the sum anymore. We have it. The sum is known to us as 342. So a is equal to 2. Your common ratio is negative 2. We do not know what the n value is. But we do know that the sum of those n terms is 342. So with care we put everything in to the formula. So 342 is equal to 2 multiplied by, in the little bracket, negative 2 to the n, take away 1, close up that bracket, divided by r minus 1. And I'm going to cheat. By negative 2 minus 1, I'll write that as negative 3. And the rest is algebra. You take your negative 3, you cross multiply or multiply both sides by negative 3 and you'll get negative 1026 is equal to 2 multiplied by negative 2 to the n minus 1 and there's our unknown in the exponent so you're probably already thinking this is a type 2 exponential function and you're right if you are thinking that I will divide by 2 to give me negative 513 and that's equal to negative 2 to the n minus 1. So stick with the question. When you add on 1 to both sides, this negative 2 to the n, this gives us negative 512. If you did try to use logarithms, you would get shut down because your calculator will not do the log of a negative. So you, your choice would be to drop them or just get a common base like we used to do. And we, we can do that because so happens that negative 2 to the exponent of 9 is equal to negative 512. So n is equal to 9. So 9 terms would be required. So be aware of that. There's an awful lot of algebra in this section, usually based on these simple formulas. Let's try another one. Now this is a bit of a variation. Given that Tn is equal to 2 times 1 fifth to the n minus 1, we want to find S6. And what makes this difficult is, excuse me, is um, you're given the term formula. And this is how we would find out individual terms. And we want S6. So we have to find A. We also need r. We do know that n is equal to 6 because that is there. Now, there's two ways you can go after that. Using the term formula, you can just go t1 is equal to 2 times 1 fifth, replace the n with 1. So that's 2 times 1 fifth to the 0. one-fifth to the zero is one so t1 is equal to two so a is equal to two and then to find r 
you go after T2. So in the same formula, 2 times 1 fifth to the 2 minus 1. And this will give us our second term. So T2 is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 fifth. So T2 is equal to 2 over 5. Now that's the second term. But if we want to get the common ratio, we do know that it is equal to two, T2 divided by T1. So the common ratio is equal to 2 over 5 divided by 2. And then very carefully, we take that 2 over 5th divided by 2 is multiplied by 1 half. So R is therefore equal to 1 over 5. And now the rest of it is quite easy. But I will point this out. If you want to find the A and the R, it might have occurred to you that the general formula for Tn is A times R to the N minus 1. So if you compare that to what we have in the original question, as long as the format is identical, there's your A and there's your R. So I, I you know, invested a fair bit of time in this, but um, I didn't have to. I could have gone directly to that. But be careful. It has to be a perfect match. It's got to be a form A, R, N minus 1. Now, we still haven't answered the question, but I will bring up a new screen, and then let's go after S6. So we want to find S6. A is equal to 2, R is equal to 1 fifth, N is equal to 6. So the formula, as you are hopefully becoming accustomed to, A times R N minus 1 over R minus 1. So that's equal to 2 times 1 over 5 to the n, the 6, minus 1. Close up that bracket, and then I'm going to cheat on the denominator again. 1 fifth minus 1 is negative 4 fifths. This could be decimalized if you preferred. And then on my calculator, I'm very careful. I will go 1 divided by 5 in that bracket to the exponent of 6 minus 1 enter. So I work out the bracket first. And it's not necessary to do this, of course, but it, it does work well. So 1 fifth raised to the 6, take away 1, you'll get some decimal negative 0.999, multiply by 2, and then if you decimalize that denominator first, you're OK. But what I'm going to do is divide by, in brackets, negative 4 divided by 5, and then close up that bracket before enter. So I'm not doing a lot of prep on this one. I'm mostly just putting it, running it right through. And then I'm getting S6 is equal to 2.49984. And I guess we should have rounded this one off to something specific I didn't really say. But we can keep it like that. Let's try another one. Find a formula for Sn for the geometric sequence 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54 plus whatever. We found formulas for Tn before. Now we find formulas for Sn. And here is our formula. Oops, take it back. So we all we do is we keep the N open. We identify the A as 2. And then your common ratio, 6 divided by 2, is 3. And then you just substitute that information in. So you are not looking for an individual sum. You're looking for a formula that will work 
for all values. So that becomes 3 to the n minus 1 over r minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2. And then when you divide out the 2's, you get 3 to the n minus 1. And this formula will work for us to find any values. So for example, find S3. Well, instead of going right back to the beginning and working this one out with the formula, you just go S3 is equal to 3 to the 3 minus 1. So 27 minus 1 is equal to 26. And by the way, you could tell by just adding these three together, so I know it's right. But you could do anything you wanted, any sum you cared to find. Let's do another one. If Sn is equal to 3 times 2 to the n minus 1, find the tenth term. Now these can be a bit of a problem. Now, this formula does link the um, the um, with the previous question. I mean, you could de definitely find the a and the r, but it's sort of the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do with this, um, I'm going to do it the long method, and then I'll do a, a shorter method. Now, method one is that you find a and r. You do so by recognizing with that formula, if you plugged in 1, you will be getting the sum of the first 1 terms, which is 3 times 2 minus 1 is 1. So therefore, S1, which is equal to T1, which is actually equal to A, is equal to 3. So there's our, our A value. And then, to find R, you simply find S2, but with care, because this is 3 times 2 squared minus 1. So S2 is equal to 3 times 2 squared minus 1 is 4 minus 1 is 3. So S2 is equal to 3 times 3 is 9. Now be careful because this is not your second term because S2 is equal to T1 plus T2. So you'd have to recognize that the sum we get, that number we get is the sum of the first two. So if we want to find the second term, T2, we therefore have to plug in T1 is equal to 3, which we already knew. And then T2 is equal to 6 by subtraction of the 3. And if you recall that r is equal to t2 divided by t1, r would then be equal to um, t2 is 6 divided by t1 is 3, so r is equal to 2. Now you might have been able to tell that by inspection as well from the original. So therefore, S, since Sn is equal to A, shouldn't be a therefore symbol, but it doesn't really matter, Rn minus 1 over R minus 1, S6 is equal to um, A, which is 3 times 2, oops, excuse me, what's all this? I want the tenth term, T10. So we have to use this formula, a r to the n minus 1. So t10 is equal to a, which is 3 times r is 2 to the 10 minus 1. So make sure you think about what you're doing with these. So 3 times 2 to the exponent of 9, t10 is equal to 1, 5, 3, 6. So that is the tenth term. So you spend a lot of time going back and forth between the term formula and the sum formula, and you have to be on top of it. What means what? 
and then of course your algebra has to be sound. Now in the next lesson I'm going to show you another method for this that's pretty quick, but I think this is enough information for now. And, um, and then the next lesson we'll also have a few applications and special case questions. But I will stop right there and uh, thank you for your time.